Today, nutritionist Joy Bowers here, joining us with a corn chowder and a spiced chai tea. Mm, Good let's morning, start cooking. Joy. Good morning. Oh, my people. Hey, guys. So today is all about warming the bones with okay. healthy foods and beverages. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to make is, like you mentioned, a cozy, creamy corn chowder. And I'm telling you, this is scrumptiously slurpable. Mm. I'm going to take you over to my stove. Okay. So here um, I have what I'm calling my nutrition confetti. All I've done is I sauteed some carrots, celery, and onions. It mm -hmm. kind of looks like confetti, doesn't Carrot, it? Celery, onions. Okay. okay. Um, and, and now we build the soup. It's as easy as that. Because corn is not in season, I'm taking advantage of canned corn actually for a few reasons. One is because I get to use it. You notice I didn't drain it. The juice, I, yeah. I'm using the flavorful broth that normally oh. we just discard. Mm -hmm. I'm putting two cans in there. Then I'm putting in a full um, four cups of either a vegetable broth or a chicken broth. What did you and use there? I would, I'm using, uh, this is a chicken broth, and I'm using a reduced sodium because I'm controlling the salt. Okay. So there we have that. And then just a little bit of cayenne because it really does give it a pop of flavor. Okay. And then last, one pound of small red potatoes. I leave the skin on for extra fiber. And um, I cut them up into bite-sized pieces right. because I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to simmer it for about 15 minutes just until those potatoes get fork tender. Okay. I'm going to put this over here, and then the fun begins. I want a lot of body in this soup, so I use an immersion blender. But you can also do this in um, small batches in either a food processor or that, a regular yeah. blender. Okay. And see what I'm doing there? I'm just yeah. blending it so they get a lot of richness and body within that soup. And if anybody doesn't have a blender right. or an immersion blender, you can leave it chunky. It's totally mm. okay. It's so good. now, yeah, it's really good. You could stop right there, but right. we're not going to stop. Oh, right. no, so then not. to finish it off, more no texture, corn. I'm mm -hmm. adding in drained corn. So this time it's two cans of drained mm -hmm. corn. Because I saw all these and, like, whole corn kernels in there. I was wondering when Yes. And before I actually pureed the whole thing, mm -hmm. I like to reserve some of the potatoes, so again, for a little bit of texture and, mm -hmm. like, surprises as you slurp through. That's really good. And yeah. a dash of salt, and it makes a great big batch. And I like to Very garnish simple. it with this a little really bit terrific. of dill. It's really good, Joy. How about the tea, Joy? Yeah, we'll try that. The, the chai tea. This is fantastic. The chai tea. So here we go. I put mm. four cups of water in here. I love chai because my kitchen smells so unbelievably right now. It really infuses it with such aroma. And in the four cups of water, my combination is some cinnamon sticks, ginger, a little bit of nutmeg, fennel, peppercorns, oh. cloves, and cardamom. Okay. And I give you a recipe for a balanced base, but really you could ramp up any of these spices if you like a stronger flavor. And so a as those were um, uh, simmering in here for about 15 minutes, then you put in your tea. So I have four tea bags that I added in. They've been in here for just about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Stick this over here. And now we build it. I add in three to four cups of a milk. Truth be told, I tried this with an almond milk, and it came out a little bit too thin, so I'm yeah. using a 2% reduced fat. Okay. And Maybe an oat a milk. Little I was going to ask you about oat milk, yeah. Oat milk would be fabulous. And this is a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of honey. And then I'm going to bring mm. you over mm. to my finished product. Come back with me okay. over here. I'm and sure it smells good. Here, yeah. You can't oh, I strain it through a colander. Mm -hmm. And here's the cool part. I feel like if you're going to be putting in so much effort, because it's much more involved than just steeping regular tea, mm -hmm. I make a great big batch. And then I stash it in the fridge. And whenever a craving calls, mm -hmm. I just warm it in the microwave. Very and you nice. have about seven cups. All right, Joy. Well, thank you much. We're, we are ready for the weekend. I know. Thank cozy. You. Yummy, yummy, it. yummy. Thank you, Joy. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, I am toasting a healthier 2021 with two scrumptious spins on toast. First, an addictive chocolate peanut butter spread. The secret ingredient is this peanut powder. And you can find this in uh, the grocery store or you could order it online. And it is packed with protein. Next, cocoa powder, which is filled with brain-boosting flavonoids. 
some sugar, and a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add six to eight tablespoons of water. And this is going to mix together to create the creamiest, dreamiest chocolate peanut butter spread. Just keep stirring and look at this, guys. It transforms into a delicious, lick the spoon, addictive spread. And now we are ready to build our toast. Putting a nice, generous amount of my chocolate peanut butter spread right on the toast. I'm gonna top it with potassium packed bananas. And really, you could put whatever fruit you want on top. And of course, the bananas have potassium, they have fiber. And on this slice, I'm also gonna add some vitamin C rich strawberries for extra flavor and extra nutrition. And the best part, guys, there is so much chocolate peanut butter sauce left over for dipping. <laughs> and now for some savory satisfaction. Caprese toast. It's a classic combo that is completely customizable. And I'm starting with the bottom base of mashed avocado. And avocado is great because it's loaded with heart healthy fat, it's got potassium, and it's got a lot of fiber too. So I'm just mashing this down as our first layer. And you probably know what comes next. Lycopene-rich tomatoes. They also have vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. And I'm putting on mozzarella, which adds some calcium. And last but not least, just some torn basil leaves, which makes the kitchen smell so good. This is one layered tower of deliciousness. But one more thing. I like to drizzle on a balsamic glaze right over the top. And if you can't find balsamic glaze, you could also take regular balsamic vinegar and you can reduce it in a small saucepan over a low heat for about 10, 20 minutes and it will thicken right up. And that's what I call a toast to a healthy 2021. Mmm. Yum. Oh, those look good. Those are doable. Great to do that this yeah. weekend. Joy, thanks so much. Coming up, uh, we, we're going to give you those recipes at today.com slash food, and we'll be right back. It is Superfood Friday, and we have a twist for you on a takeout favorite. Here to make egg roll bowls today nutritionist and our pal joy bauer good morning joy good morning guys oh my goodness i wish you could smell how fabulous it is mm. in my kitchen right now i mean this is when we need smell of vision oh, i think right. you're gonna love this one <laughs> so it's like a deconstructed egg roll kind of turned stir fry Right. Um, and it has all of those Asian flavors that we love and we crave, but I'm cutting the carbs and I'm bumping up the protein. Okay. So here, what I've started with, um, I blasted shiitake mushrooms with some heat. And what I love about these mushrooms, they're loaded with antiviral properties. And if you can't find shiitake, certainly you can use um, baby bella or you could mm -hmm. use mush uh, button mushrooms, anything goes. Next, this is just a store-bought bag of pre-shredded coleslaw mix oh. because the star is really the shredded cabbage. Okay. And cabbage is loaded with vitamin C, but it also has, um, it's part of the cruciferous family of vegetables. So it has compounds that are being studied for cancer prevention. Mm. And Typically, I would let this wilt down and become a little bit more tender for about three minutes, but I'm going to fly through this, and you're okay. going to see how easy it is. Next, lean ground turkey meat. So this is just one pound. Mm -hmm. You could certainly use a lean ground sirloin if you want, or you can use ground chicken, and it's all about the marinades. It's all about the flavor. Well, I was just so, about to ask you, because right there, it can go a number of ways with the taste. How do you get it to taste like you know a traditional egg roll? That's exactly right. So all this is, I'm sprinkling on two teaspoons of ground ginger, two teaspoons of garlic powder, mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. And if you want to kick up the heat, you can also put in uh, crushed red pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. And now for the wet marinade, this is just reduced sodium soy sauce, mm -hmm. a little bit of rice vinegar, 
and we have um, a dash of sesame oil. Okay. And you're just going to cook this and break it up. And I'm going to bring you over to my counter and show you what the finished product looks like. Okay. So if you can imagine, in 20 minutes, this is done. So come on with me. Oh, Cole Bowers, Joy, come Impressive. Here. Two camera shoot. Wow. <laughs> It's all about Ian Bauer, and I have a real taste tester. Cole Bauer is in the house right Hi, Cole. now. Hi, Cole. Show what you're eating. Cole can't he hear doesn't us. have the air Yeah, I have heard. <laughs> he's so cute. And he's going so, in with chopsticks. Very good. Yeah. This is what it looks like. I'm going to garnish it. Look, it's all shredded just like the mm. real McCoy. Mm -hmm. It's like the inside of an, an egg, egg roll. roll. And, oh. Mm, can you see that? I could Look eat a whole bowl of that, of that right and, now. And really quickly, uh, Joy, you, you've got a homemade duck sauce. Okay, we need the duck sauce. Three ingredients, Al. All it is, this is an all-fruit apricot jam, mm -hmm. three-quarter cup, and I'm adding in a tablespoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of rice vinegar. Oh. And once again, if you want to kick up that heat, like Joy Bauer, mm -hmm. you put in a little bit of red pepper flakes. All you do is you mix this up. It is so tangy. Oh, it is so sweet. And it just like brings it over the top. I'm going to show you. This is this is one I just whipped up that Cole's mm, been eating. That is fantastic. But Cole Joy, is so yeah. lucky. That is so terrific. And you could use that <laughs> Cole, later. Cole, come on back. Any leftovers you could probably throw into an omelet or a frittata. Oh, really yeah. Great. Joy, thank you, you so know, much. Cole, thank you. For more recipes, <laughs> go to today.com slash food. Welcome back. It is Superfood Friday, and today nutritionist Joy Bauer is putting a spin on two easy comfort food recipes. Take a look. Hey guys, today we're making scrumptious, wholesome recipes using a muffin tin. First up is a mac and cheese butternut squash. So here I've roasted butternut squash cubes in the oven at 400 for about 25 minutes to get them super soft. And I just take a fork and I mash them so they're the consistency of mashed potatoes. And we're gonna start our indulgent cheese sauce. I'm adding one cup of low-fat milk, half a teaspoon onion powder, quarter teaspoon of dry mustard, and an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And now you have the option to add a few drops of your favorite hot sauce. Bring this to a gentle simmer. My milk is starting to gently bubble. Turn off the heat and I'm gonna add two cups of 2% sharp cheddar. Mix it so all the cheese melts throughout. We've got all of this luscious whipped butternut squash and I'm gonna mix it right in the pot and one tablespoon of softened butter. And now I'm adding my sauce right into my pasta. One thing, it's important to cook the pasta, your elbows, al dente, because remember, it's gonna cook again in the oven. I'm adding in one large beaten egg. Now we take our muffin tin, and I'm gonna take half cup scoops to fill my compartments. I'm gonna top them with a little grated Parmesan cheese. And they go in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. I let these sit and firm for about five, 10 minutes. Pop them out with a knife or a spoon. I mean, good for you mac and cheese that you can eat with your hands. And now we're making three ingredient candy bars that'll really hit the sweet spot. Chocolate peanut butter crunch cups. Two cups of semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips two cups of crispy rice cereal, although you can use any high fiber whole grain cereal, and a quarter cup of a creamy nut butter. I'm using peanut butter. So first I'm going to melt the chocolate, either using a double boiler or in the microwave. Now I'm just adding in a quarter cup of my creamy peanut butter using semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips will provide flavanols which helps to keep our arteries healthy, our heart, our brain healthy. Now I'm just adding in my brown rice cereal. You can see this is like a crispy puffed brown rice cereal and mix until all of the cereal is coated. And we are ready for our muffin tin and distribute the chocolatey peanut buttery goodness. I just wet my fingers so they don't stick to the chocolate and I press down to firm the shape. And just one more thing. You can sprinkle some coarse sea salt 
or coaster style right over the top. Then I stash these in the fridge to firm up for about 30 minutes. As you can see, <laughs> I've already dug into two. Guys, I love this recipe so much. It's totally indulgent, perfectly portion control. You just pop them right out of the compartment. I mean, come on, you definitely want a bite of that. Mm, I and do, we can actually. eat the whole thing? I know, we just see us leaning <laughs> forward as if that's gonna help. <laughs> One day we'll get food again, I, I know. For these recipes and more, just head to today.com slash food. We'll be right back. I'm a New Yorker and I grew up on bagels. Of course, everybody knows from my accent that I'm from New York. I was on a mission to make a bagel with protein and fiber. And I experimented with a few different combinations, but this one is the winner. The real superstar in this recipe is hands down Greek yogurt. The non-fat Greek yogurt brings so much protein to the table. And that's why each of these delicious bagels has 10 grams of protein. That's like unheard of for a bagel. I love bagels. I was bought up on bagels. I love all types of bagels, onion bagels, garlic bagels, everything bagels, and cinnamon raisin bagels. Knowing that they're basically a big pile of starch, I wanted to figure out a way to make a bagel that had a bunch of protein in it, a bunch of fiber in it, and I think I hit the winning combination. You start with two cups of whole wheat flour, one tablespoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of chia seeds. Whenever I can, I love to add a little sprinkle of chia seeds right into the mix. So chia seeds are filled with protein, fiber, and omega-3s. And the cool thing about chia seeds is that these little tiny seeds swell up to nine times their size in your stomach. So they can help keep you feeling full for a long time. And one teaspoon of kosher salt. And now we're gonna turn this into a batter. I'm adding two cups of non-fat, thick Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt has more than twice the amount of protein compared to traditional yogurt. Now, because this dough is a little bit sticky, you're gonna want some extra flour close by. And then you jump in with your hands. This is really fun for your kids. I'm gonna dump this right onto the counter. So look how great this looks. We have a nice, consistent, firm dough ball. Now I'm gonna flatten this out just a little bit. And I'm gonna prepare the cinnamony goodness. One tablespoon of cinnamon mixed with three tablespoons of packed brown sugar. I'm gonna sprinkle this on. I'm gonna knead it in. And now for the finale, I'm gonna add a quarter cup to a half a cup of raisins. Now I'm gonna cut my dough into eight even pieces. So you're gonna take each of the pieces and you're gonna roll a log. And then you put them right on the parchment paper. And now I'm just gonna pop them in the oven, set at 350 for 25 minutes. These look amazing. They're perfect. Let them cool and then we're ready for some toppings. Look at that swirl. Is that awesome? I'm gonna add some light cream cheese. So good, I could have this for breakfast or dessert. 
I love this penny alla vodka because it delivers that indulgent, rich flavor that everybody loves, but it's light and it's healthy. When I came home and I announced to my family that I was taking on penny alla vodka, they cheered. The first thing I did was I swapped out white pasta or penne for whole grain because you're automatically getting more fiber and it's going to be more filling. And with all of the sauce smothered on top, you don't even taste the difference. This recipe was originally a challenge from one of our awesome viewers. And when I came home and I announced to my family that I was taking on penne alla vodka, they literally shrieked. Everybody was so happy. My kids are like, mom is making penne alla vodka? Because it's one of those things that you order out in an Italian restaurant knowing that it's an indulgent splurge. But really, I figured out how to lighten it up and maintain the signature flavor, and everybody loved it. I'm adding the shallots to the pan, and I'm going to saute them over medium heat for about five minutes until they get soft, translucent, super aromatic. The kitchen is going to start to smell unbelievable. So this recipe is not only delicious, it's actually really good for you. First starting with the shallots, they're part of the onion family, and they contain prebiotics which aid in digestion. They smell so divine, they're so easy to work with, you've got to pick up shallots. Now adding our garlic. And you're just going to saute the garlic for about two minutes. And now for the star of our show, the booze. So it's very important that you lower the heat on your pan because you don't want to ignite a big flame when you put the alcohol in. We're going to saute this just for a, a minute or two um, and deglaze as it sizzles. So all of the yummy flavors come together. And at this point, the alcohol is evaporating, so if you are serving it for kids, you're totally fine. And in terms of the vodka, definitely stick with just a quarter of a cup. I know it's the signature ingredient in the dish, but if you put in too much, you're going to ruin the whole meal. Adding two cups of marinara sauce, and you can use any favorite brand that you have in the house. If you want to make your own homemade, go for it. So let's talk about marinara sauce. Marinara sauce is loaded with cooked tomatoes. And the cool thing about cooked tomatoes is that they have a compound called lycopene. So not only does it deliver great taste, it's actually really good for your health as well. Now, if you want to make your own marinara sauce, amazing. Truth be told, I generally buy the store-bought brands, and I look for any kind of brand that has no more than seven grams of sugar per half cup serving. And there are loads of them on the market and I'm adding a quarter cup of half and half. Now, in the restaurant, they tend to use a lot of heavy cream, and half and half is a combination of heavy cream and whole milk, but you're maintaining that signature rich, indulgent, creamy texture. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Instead of traditional white pasta, I'm using whole grain pasta for more filling fiber. But for people that are looking to cut back on their carbs, it's so easy to make the sauce and then mix it with zoodles, which are zucchini noodles, or even spaghetti squash. Now we're gonna add the cheese that's gonna make it nice and creamy. Half a cup of part skim ricotta, quarter cup of really good aged Parmesan, three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. Let's stir this together. And you can see we're creating that signature pink color. I create the creamy texture from combining the perfect mix of part skim ricotta instead of full fat and Parmesan cheese. I use the real McCoy there and if you could pick up a really good brand, it's going to drive great flavor and this is ready for the pasta. Now what I like to do for the finishing touches, I add a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. I add extra Parmesan cheese and some fresh basil. And there you have it, penne alla vodka that you could feel good about eating.
I like to serve great big bowls to my family. And I would love for you yeah. to taste this okay. because people need to believe that this is actually and I would delicious love to taste and creamy. It. Isn't that delicious? Really good. Mm -hmm. And it's easy enough to toss together on a hectic weeknight or fancy enough to serve for guests at a dinner party. You gotta try this. Mmm.